So we're going to put out an executive order today, New York State on pause. Only essential businesses will be functioning. People can work at home, God bless you, great citizen. Uh, these are legal provisions, they will be enforced. There will be a civil fine and mandatory closure for any business that is not in compliance. And when I talk about the most drastic action we can take, this is the most drastic action we can take. First, I like stayed in the room, didn't move, you know, didn't want to go out. No place would hire me. A lot of places are closed down. That juice place pulled down. Worst one, I used to love juniors in the pizza place over there, the restaurant over there. McDonald's down there on 42nd. He just told me yesterday though that he only, he was the only one working to pay for pay people. Just trying to bring in the business back in. They don't know their situation. Some of the things that the president or the governor has promised pretty jarring. The state says its unemployment hotline had a 16,000 percent increase in phone calls last week with over 8 million incoming calls and typically they only get about 50,000 calls a week. Governor Cuomo's office says they've reassigned hundreds of workers from different agencies to man the unemployment call center, also extending its hours. The bad news is there were so many unemployment claims that it has collapsed the unemployment department's uh, system, their website system, their phone system. If that's the truth, why am I asking for it? Right now it's very hard. The hundred percent of the productivity was before COVID. Right now what you can reach in terms of business, I believe in New York City, is 67 percent for 2020 and 84 percent in 2021, knowing that the hundred percent is uh, February 2020, which means before COVID. Peace and blessings, everybody. My name is Minister Nasi. I'm one of the proud vendors of New York City. You know, wanted to make it clear that, you know, due to unfortunate racism of this country, you know, there's those like myself who, you know, quote unquote African American that are struggling right now big time. Poor and minority communities are suffering most. It's not just the racism, but it's also the fact of the pandemic that's making it hard for people like myself to be able to make, on, make an honest living. 41% of black business owners shuttered during the pandemic, the most of any group. I'm somebody that has dreams and aspirations like other people in the world. I want to be able to you know, travel the world and do great things like other people in the world want to do. A recent survey of 500 minority-owned businesses found only 12% received a loan amount requested. Denied welfare, food stamps, you know, denied Social Security, it's not fair. One of the things that I do right now, I'm the only one with the Black Lives Matter keychains, okay, and I let people know if you want to have your wedding photos on keychains, you know, whatever event you have, you want to have keychains on, 
anywhere from a dozen to as many as you want, you can have it done. Mask is one of the options that you have. You've got regular masks, reg the regular black, and then you also have other styles such as the Puerto Rican flag as well. So you have your options, okay, sunglasses. So these are some of the things that we do. We're trying to, you know, do an honest job, make an honest living, you know, so we could be independent and be able to take care of ourselves like you should be able to do. You know, you know, I gotta eat and pay bills like you know every anybody else. So I wanted to, you know, put that message out there, you know, around the world that hey, you know, you have those like myself, okay, that is out here, you know, trying to make an honest living, you know, and it's a struggle. You know what I'm saying? And it shouldn't have to be a struggle like that. gyms and fitness centers and classes will also close entirely effective at 8 p.m. this evening until such time that it is deemed safe for their reopening. All non-essential and non-emergency travel in New Jersey strongly discouraged. Gyms and fitness centers and classes all will close entirely effective 8 p.m. tonight. Again, I repeat, gyms and fitness centers and classes all will close entirely effective 8 p.m. Until such time that it's deemed safe for their reopening. My name is uh, Joanne Ganser. My name is Jing Chen. My name is Jack Chen. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. The virus continues to spread, so does fear. Only West Virginia has yet to report a confirmed case. Late Friday night, the Pentagon halting all official domestic travel for service members, DOD civilians and their families, effective March 16th through May 11th. When I first found out, I actually had heard whispers of a virus going around and uh, didn't quite know what to make of it. Across the country, more than 100 patients in 26 states are being monitored for possible coronavirus, including a student at Wesleyan. California health officials emphasizing there is no immediate danger to the public. I already heard some news from China. They have this kind of virus around. A whole city in quarantine. A public health announcement is broadcast to a near empty street in Wuhan, but the medical centers are overflowing. And even if residents feel well, they could still be a carrier of the new coronavirus. I had a feeling it was going to come over here too, but I didn't think um, it was going to impact us the, on the scale it did. The CDC confirming all five patients in the U.S. had traveled to Wuhan. My business partner had said to me, you know, maybe you should get some masks for your son. And I didn't really know what to think of that. So when I, when I went on and I looked, I, I kind of realized there were no masks for sale. Um, I tried to go to Home Depot, which is something local in our area, and I tried to order masks online, and I got a call from Home Depot the next day saying they were already out of N95 masks, and I kind of knew right then and there we, we had a situation. Tonight, the World Health Organization raising the risk level globally to very high. Health systems around the world are not ready uh, and, and need to be better prepared to absorb the impact. We didn't think it was gonna be for long, um, yes, we were thinking maybe two months, three months. A couple weeks. We had a corporate account. We were traveling for um, 
seminars and trainings um, to other states. We had a full program for martial arts and fitness. So inside we were operational running classes and then outside the center we were, you know, traveling and teaching self-defense seminars and fitness and, um, and after March 16th it all ended. We know this will only add more hurt at a time when you are already immeasurably hurting. I was following it. I knew it was a serious situation. So when we had heard of the, you know, the state shutting down, it seemed like a reasonable request. Follow the guidelines, follow the decision, and um, cope with it. Like, wow, you know, we're so used to working out on site and to see the customers face to face, um, we quickly made the decision to shift to online training. Hi, I'm Coach Joanne. I'm the director here at FTC Fitness. Thank you so much for filling out the form online. We're excited to work with you. We literally teach to a TV screen. Uh, we are using uh, things such as Zoom, which we know has gotten more popular. <laughs> Zoom has gotten more popular by demand. Uh, we teach on a TV screen. Our members log on and we teach live classes. Um, you know, thankfully our members understand the situation with the pandemic and they're actually logging on and working out with us online. Initially, I think we were, we saw it was going to be okay if it's not for too long. I planned for the, only the two months. So after two months, I realized, that, oh, there's no other resource. You know? We had a corporate client um, calling us saying they have to pause the contract. Our main focus is the corporation account. A lot of people couldn't even find equipment to work out at home because it was just sold out. I tried to apply this, uh, some financial assistance from state too, and they told me that just the waiting list too long, already run out of money. Another thing the president is upset about is this end of the money for this small business program right now. The administration had a new small business program, the money ran out. And that's it, and then how they allocate the money for the small business, there's no detail. And how they, you know, the pick, pick and choose, you know, which, which business they want to give the, give the money to, there's no detail either. When you have rent and utilities and um, insurance payments and employees that are all here on site, online doesn't cut it. Every day we wake up, we follow the briefing by the governor and hoping for some good news. But, you know, here we are five months later, we're still working out online, we're still not operational inside the business and you know we just don't quite know what to do at this point. Governor Murphy announcing that on July 2nd casinos and racetracks can open and indoor dining can resume and effective immediately outdoor gatherings may now increase from 100 to 250 people. I went to BJ's they were shutting down different aisles. People were crammed crammed into the aisles next to each other. People were trying to social distance but there was no social distancing. We line up, yes, there's little spots on the floor. There's too many people inside. They couldn't even social distance. And I am surrounded by people. I had somebody take their mask, pull it down, sneeze, and put the mask up in a closed area at a food market. But we can't operate with five or six people inside the business. Non-essential businesses can now reopen for curbside pickup. One type of business not on that list, though, gyms. We have a lot of questions. Our, our members have a lot of questions. There's a lot of fear right now with the public. We were not fired. We didn't do anything wrong. We were trying to do something right and we're being punished for it. If there was help, if I knew there was help in the future, I would have a lot of hope. But right now, the only thing I'm seeing is bills piling up. I see a lot of fear from the customers and I don't know how to operate six months from now. Do these small owned gyms go by playing by the rules and decide to stay closed and possibly have to go out of business or do they defy the order and open up and face the consequences? So I have a landlord who wants rent with a business that's shut down by the state of New Jersey. Yet, if I operate and I do what I need to do to pay the bills, I can be arrested. We had the police and we fully, fully support the police. We will always support the police department. And I actually felt sorry for them. We had the police driving by, looking inside, only to find out later on that the police was possibly called on us because they believed that we were operational. We were not operational. We had people looking inside, seeing what we were doing, and they weren't customers looking to join. They were looking to see exactly what we were doing. Were we breaking the law? The owner of the company was outside and I was with her. We had my five-year-old son with us 
and we were uh, accosted by a person who drove up to us, stuck their head out the window and was like, excuse me, excuse me, you know, what you're doing is illegal. We understand it's not going to last forever, but the way we do business, the way we run classes, um, people's mentality, um, the way people train, everything has been affected. Um, even now, like when we, um, we did a quick survey with the members, do they feel comfortable coming back? Um, a lot of them said no. We were promised uh, that this was going to last until the curve was flattened. Uh, the curve has flattened and so far we are still in lockdown or still in shutdown, at least for the fitness side of the industry. And then on Monday, personal care businesses can reopen. Those include beauty salons and barber shops, along with nail salons, massage parlor and tattoo businesses. I don't know where this is coming from, but for me, that doesn't seem fair. I can go to a spa and have somebody touch me and rub me. I go to physical therapy. My therapist is touching me the whole time. A hair salon. You wear a mask, you wear gloves, and everything's okay. So I don't understand why we couldn't open. Inside, no ventilation, close contact uh, is a hard nut to crack. We're just not there yet. You're not there yet on gyms. We're not there yet. If it's truly the air conditioning units, that is a fixable solution. Allow us to fix it. Provide guidelines and allow us to fix the problem. I remember researching everywhere to try to find the guidelines and even seek professional help. And even the people we asked had no idea. If there's no clear guidelines and the curve is flattened, but there's still a level of fear being generated by the media, how do we explain to our customers, yes, you can safely come back in here and we have protocols in place. We need protocols from the state to do that. I, I think our team has a meeting with the Gym Owners Association, I think literally beginning right now at two o'clock. So I've got no news to report, but we are trying to find a way to get to both indoor dining and, and, and get gyms open. I don't, again, I don't have news to report. I can't tell you when or how. Here is Tennessee. They opened the gyms in May, 50% capacity, and here are all the guidelines. Your consumer protection, all right? What you're supposed to do, guidelines for business. Here it is, easy to find, okay? So my question is, if Tennessee can do it, why can't New Jersey? One other element of the executive order, uh, which is a particular element I like, the guy two to my right uh, has the ability to either open the spigot or close the spigot as he and we determine and see fit. Why am I shut down? First of all, liquor stores are not uh, closed. Um, we have deemed them to be allowed to be open. This is where my frustration comes from. My hands are tied behind my back. My hands are tied behind my back in New Jersey. This week, Governor Murphy said he was trying to figure out the best course of action for gyms, but he has still not set a date for when they will be allowed to reopen. It's new hospitalizations, it's rate of transmission, it's spot positivity. We were up literally five, six days ago at 141. But without guidelines, we are hostage. We are hostage to the government, we are hostage to the state, and we are hostage to our bills that are piling up. And if everything falls apart, you're still liable. They need predictability, certainty. They need some visibility to a plan so that they can plan and decide whether or not they're gonna mitigate their losses or try and hang in there. They can attempt to turn the water off here. They can lock the doors. They can take away my business license. But you know what? Those bills don't go away. I cannot understand how the state of New Jersey, the government can shut a company down legally, but we are still on the hook for all the bills. People are asking us, what's going on? When can we start it? When can we start training? When can we do this? When can we start this certification? And what's going on? What's the new rule? What's the, do you guys have the schedule? And we have no answer to it. Now to today's coronavirus news, New Jersey will allow gyms to reopen on September 1st, but will not allow them to have more than 25% capacity. Today, I will be signing an executive order allowing all gyms and health clubs and indoor amusement facilities to reopen to their members and customers beginning this upcoming Tuesday, September 1st. When the doors reopen and our gyms capacity will be limited to 25%, at any single time. Fitness classes will also be allowed to resume, but their capacity must be limited to one customer per every 
200 square feet of classroom space to ensure proper distancing. These protocols will also apply to fitness activities like Pilates and yoga classes that were already permitted to resume. All gym goers are required to wear masks at all time when in the gym. Employees and staff must wear masks at all time, even trainers working with a client. And logs of when all gym members and staff are in the facility must be maintained. So should a positive test be received by someone who was in a gym, our contact tracers can get right to work notifying other gym goers who were there with him, with them. Additionally, on the floors, equipment is to either be moved and spaced to allow a minimum of six feet of distance between all gym goers or where equipment can't be moved, certain machines must be cordoned off so that gym goers are at least six feet apart. So for example, in a row of treadmills, this may mean that only every other treadmill will be available for use. And only equipment that can be properly sanitized in between uses should be made available. My biggest concern is with losing the customer and also people scared to come back to, you know, to, to do the exercise. I think until people feel safe again, they're not gonna freely walk into the gyms and just work out the way they used to. We do appreciate our loyal members that have been, have stayed with us, have been consistent. Um, we do appreciate their support. Um, it's actually part of the reason we kept going. I don't think anything's ever gonna be the same again. Um, I think from this point forward, you're gonna find a hybrid system that's gonna be online, in-person training, and small group classes. Um, there's gonna definitely be a shift into the industry onto online training. Um, we're on Instagram for FTC Fitness. We're also on Facebook for FTC Fitness. And we're also on YouTube for FTC Fitness. This morning, I signed an executive order directing nearly all of our 9 million residents to quite simply stay at home. As I said, we must flatten the curve and ensure residents are practicing social distancing. As I have said before, we can no longer maintain a sense of business as usual during this emergency. And again, I repeat, just as it is no time to panic, but it is time to be smart proactive, transparent, aggressive. It is also no time for business as usual. As I said, we must flatten the curve and ensure residents are practicing social distancing. As I have said before, we can no longer maintain a sense of business as usual during this emergency. And again, I repeat, just as it is no time to panic, but it is time to be smart, proactive, transparent, aggressive, it is also no time for business as usual. My name is Martin. My father, John, and my mother, Alice, uh, they co-founded the restaurant in uh, 1983. Prior to pandemic, we were we were busy. We were up about uh, about like ten percent up from last year. We did a lot of dine-in business. I originally thought it was just only going to be you know several months. People really weren't uh, following the rules. People think that was a hoax, and things got prolonged. All bars and restaurants are closed for eat-in services, effective 8 p.m. this evening, until further notice. After 8 p.m. On until further notice, these establishments may open for takeout and delivery orders only. At that time, uh, our sales dropped tremendously. All the other restaurants were busy on the weekend. We were dead. People were afraid to eat Chinese food. That's pretty, pretty funny. A lot of us will be turning to takeout, but is it safe? We lost 
about half our sales. Chinese restaurant owners across the country say the spread of the coronavirus has impacted their business. Nobody came into the restaurant. No, uh, we didn't. We probably had a couple orders, a couple takeout orders during the day, and at night it was just just empty. There was a lot of fear of Asians in general. Quite a few instances where I leave, you know, the restaurant, walk in a sidewalk, and had people just avoiding me, not walking from. They would walk on the busy street just to avoid me. They automatically assumed that I was Chinese, but I'm American, I'm born and raised here. I've never been to China. Racism in the time of pandemic. A young woman wearing a mask is attacked in a subway station. Come here, sanitize your Come here. An elderly woman is chased by a bully trying to squirt hand sanitizer on her. If I'm going out to stores, if I'm either going to a grocery store or a home improvement store, you know, still people look at me and kind of, kind of step back. But, you know, I think that's just part of ignorance. You know, people still have that in their mind. You know, there's still a lot of, you know, xenophobia against Asians still to this day. You would hear the news that there was, you know, more violence towards Asian Americans. Harassment and assaults against Asian Americans are up sharply. <laughs> you still hear stories, you know, about, you know, about people getting, you know, beat up, you know, or harassed in the stores. The president of the United States is still saying, you know, the China virus. I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. There's now more stereotypes against Asian Americans in general that, you know, we eat all these different types of animals. I don't like Asian people because they eat bats. There's a lot of ignorant people out there. Vandals spray painted a Chinese restaurant in Bergen County, New Jersey, and officials are calling it a hate crime. Police say the suspect spray painted the words COVID-19 and coronavirus all over the new gourmet garden restaurant on Crescent Avenue in Wyckoff. That just comes with ignorance. You know, people just don't know any better. And, and you know, it, and I, it's really disappointing to see that. There's only a few restaurants in Morristown that were opened. Uh, we, we were one of the few. Uh, you know, I, I had my day job. Um, and then right after that, I would come in uh, and work from 5 until, you know, 8.30. We had difficulties, you know, around uh, March because our distributor shut down. And my father, my mother, and I, we would have to go out and source other, you know, vegetables or, or poultry from other stores and we, we've gone you know we've driven like an hour just to go to go to go get some you know poultry my father would go to Hunts Point Fish Market early morning you know 1 30 2 a.m. and uh, he used to be a fisherman so he used to pick out you know the fish for the week we have a lot of Asian clientele just come in just for the fresh fish so that has definitely you know, affected us tremendously our restaurants it's, 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 it's a hidden gem actually in Morristown um, we don't do that much advertising a lot of it's just word of mouth but what we're really known for is first our, our Taiwanese sausage we, we make you know a pre pre pandemic we're average like 500 pounds a week um, it's really authentic Taiwanese food we have a lot of clientele that just they, they want to come inside with indoor dining out of the question we lost you know, most of our sales. Indoor dining delayed in New Jersey. Governor Murphy announcing this afternoon plans to start seating customers inside this week are now on hold. Uh, New Jersey didn't really take care of the small businesses. We were not treated fairly. We know quite a few uh, family and friends that had to shut down the business. We're still not open in for indoor dining yet. We do have to take additional precautions, more sanitizing, uh, you know, we had to continue wearing face shields still and masks. It's going to drive costs up, but you know, it's, it's part of business. There's going to be a lots of changes in the next few years. Hopefully we can get out of it soon.